Before we get started, I just want to say that my Order Systems colleague, Ian, discovered most of the method I'll be demonstrating in this video. I just put it to the test and just here presenting it to you now. We've been getting more and more requests to provide a solution for a twin intercom to core control system or systems in apartments within an MDU without using an on-site or cloud-based PBX. This video, I will cover the configuration of using a 2N IP Verso to create a SIP call to a control force system without a PBX within an MDU. An MDU is a multi-dwelling unit and there are many examples of an MDU, but one example could be apartments or homes within a single building that use a single entrance and exit point. Or it could be a gated community, say, four houses behind a single entrance and exit gate. Usually, an MDU will have a common feature, an entrance panel, to allow homeowners or tenants to access the MDU via key code or a FOB and allow visitors to call the apartments or homes they wish to visit. In an MDU, usually there's some sort of network infrastructure. In a comms cupboard or a server room somewhere, there'll be a communal LAN setup. This will usually be a router and a big network switch or switches, which would either provide ethernet connections to each apartment or a home, and on the end of those connections is an answering unit. Or the communal switch would feed smaller switches over the site and locally connect to each apartment's answering unit. Also on the communal LAN would live the intercom at the entrance point of the site. Cable length runs and the amount of apartments requiring intercom configuration would be some of the factors you have to keep in mind when you're planning an MDU project. So for that configuration, you could install a 2N answering unit such as an indoor view or a SIP phone in each apartment and it would be on the same local area network as the intercom on the communal network. And then that would be a straightforward SIP call from the intercom to the apartment. Or you can configure and centralize this using the My2M platform and make all the calls over the cloud. Because the SIP phones and the answering units only really use for intercom and nothing else such as lighting, media control or climate, you just pop them physically in each apartment and it would all be on a flat network. But when you have a control system, most of the time it would be installed behind its own router in the apartment. And depending on how you've specced the MDU could pose a few questions such as does the home have its own ISP and ISP provided router? Is the MDU providing internet from the communal LAN to the apartment dual WAN router? So for this video, I'll go on the assumption of the call that we received at Order Systems. The apartment in the MDU has a separate incoming ISP into a dual WAN router. The ISP line is going into WAN 1 and the connection from the communal LAN is going into WAN 2. Let's go over the topology for this setup. On the communal LAN, or the management LAN, the building LAN, however you want to name it, is an Arachnis AN310 router. On the downlink to the router is an Arachnis AN210 24 port network switch, and out of the switch on switch port 5 is a 2N IP Verso intercom with a gold license applied. Also on this switch might be building Wi-Fi, building SIP phones, anything relating back to the building or the management. The communal router and switch would be locked away in a comms cabinet somewhere and the 2N Verso will be at the entrance point to the site. Out of the communal switch is a Cat6 run going up to the apartment. Let's say the apartment number is 174, the penthouse. In the apartment is another Arachnis AN310 dual WAN router. Out of the router LAN port is a connection to an unmanaged PoE network switch, a little 8 port one. On this switch is an Arachnis AN510 wireless access point, a Control 4 EA3 and a Control 4 T3 wireless touch panel. Now, when Ian and I first tackled this challenge, we started by opening port 5060 in the apartment router to forward SIP traffic to Control 4. In Composer, we were using the 2N intercom driver and got it partially working. I say partially because we come up against some problems. We couldn't register the Verso to the Control 4 controller. We got it in an online state and we could view the web UI and the camera in Composer. But when we call Control 4, we'd get no video 
or the screen was green or the Verso thought it was calling Control 4, but the Control 4 was not listening for the call. We also tried to resolve this by trying out some other methods in the router, such as opening more port forwarding rules, one-to-one -one NAT, static routing, gateway-to-gateway -gateway VPN, we took Wireshark traces, disabled the firewalls, and even enabled the MZ to the Control 4 controller, but it just wasn't getting us the result we wanted. Yes, it was mildly frustrating, but we were not to be beaten. Then, that afternoon, Ian called me and said, I've got some news and left me hanging. I've cracked it, he said. He explained it to me on the phone and then put it to the test and it worked. I was over the moon. I almost got in my car, drove to Aylesbury to shake that man's hand, but it was cold that day, so I stayed put. Plus, I had COVID as well. Anyway, let's go through the setup. All the configuration was done on the apartment router, the control four and the 2N intercom. We didn't need to touch the communal network at all. So on this system I've got here, the communal network address is 192.168.7.0.24. The gateway is 192.168.7.1. And the 2N intercom is on 192.168.7.23. Then we've got the apartment network. The apartment network address is 192.168.1.0.24. The gateway address is 192.168.1.1 and the control 4 address is 192.168.1.102. In WAN 2 of this router is the connection from the communal network and the WAN IP address of the apartment router is a host address on the communal network which is 192.168.7.125. So let's start with the setup of the apartment router. The first thing was to enable SIP ALG, that's in the firewall section of the router. SIP ALG stands for the Application Layer Gateway. You'll find this on many commercial and residential firewalls, routers or modems. It's a NAT tool that inspects SIP messages and transforms a private IP address and port to public IP addresses and ports. Then we create a port forwarding rule to the Control 4 controller. We opened SIP port 5060 on the WAN side and forwarded that to the LAN side. We can see the WAN address of the apartment router is 192.168.7.125 and we want to forward SIP traffic to 192.168.1.102, the Control 4 controller. And that was it in the router, nothing else to do. As a test, I disabled these protocols when we were testing it all. This caused the system not to work as it should, so at minimum, SIP ALG and port forwarding to 5060 needs to be enabled. I've got a factory reset 2M Verso here, so I'll just change the default login details. Under services, phone, and SIP1, we have the display name. I'm going to put this as the lobby door. Then I'm going to input the apartment number in the phone number field. So the apartment number is 174. In the domain field, we need the WAN address of the apartment router. So 192.168.7.125. The Verso is sitting on the communal network, don't forget. Then we use authentication. The ID and password, I'll just put in 174 to keep it simple. And in SIP proxy and SIP registrar, we once again put the IP of the WAN address of the apartment router. If we didn't use the WAN address of the apartment router, it wasn't working as it should. Under calls and answering mode, SIP1, we want to make sure it's set to automatic. The audio and video tab we can leave as default. Under streaming, we want to enable the RTSP server and we can put in a user account of 174 and password of 174 and give it administrator privileges. This is something I discovered. This will allow us to view the camera of the Verso from the Control 4 touch panel. When this wasn't enabled, I was unable to see the Verso feed from the Control 4 navigator. Under the HTTP API, we can leave all these settings as default. We just need to change the switch API to unsecure and none. 
Now we can head to the directory. We're going to create a user and call it apartment 174. And in the phone number field, we're going to put in all slash one. We're using SIP1 in the Verso to make a call. Under hardware and buttons, we're going to add a user to the button. When we push the button, it will call the number associated with apartment 174. Now we can head over to Composer, and this is a fresh project, just with the EA3 and T3 touch panel installed. We're not going to use the 2N intercom driver, we just couldn't get it to play ball properly, so we went with this method instead. I'm going to add in the H264 instance of the Verso camera. For the username, I'm going to put 174, and the password also 174, and I can leave it as digest authentication. Now we need to add the communication agent. So under agents, we're going to add communication. Once it's added in, we go to advanced and add an external device. The caller ID, we're going to put as lobby. This is what will show on the control 4 touch panel. Then in SIP AOR, we're going to put in 174, so the apartment number, at and the IP address of the control 4 controller, so 192.168.1.102. SIP AOR is the address of record and this points to a domain with a location service that can map URI to another URI where the user might be available. Basically, we've told the Verso to be registered to Composer as an external device. The Verso is on the communal LAN and sees the apartment router as a local host on that communal LAN network. So it sends the SIP registration to 192.168.7.125, which is the WAN address of the apartment router, which, if you remember, we put in the Verso SIP1 account field. We were told the apartment router to forward traffic coming in on the WAN address on port 5060 to the control 4 controller on 192.168.1.102. That's what the SIP AOR is doing here. It's also listening for number 174 to be phoned, which again was specified in the Verso SIP1 account. And then we put the password, again just going to use 174. We're going to tick the option use alternate camera and select the camera instance we brought in for the Helios Verso. Then I'll tick is door station, which gives us the option to select the door release. And then in the custom button, we're going to type in door release. Now I need to be able to control the door lock from the touch panel. So for this, I'll be using the Chowmain generic TCP command driver. First thing I need to do is add in the driver central cloud instance and link the account to the project. Then I'll add in the generic TCP command driver. And go to programming. So on the event, I'll select the communication agent. And it gives me the option of when the door release button is pressed. And on the action on the right side of Composer, going to select the generic TCP command driver and choose the option send HTTP post. Then I'm going to send the API command to control the relay on the 2N Verso. This is readily available on the 2N wiki page. So it's the IP address of the Verso, forward slash API, forward slash switch, forward slash control, switch one, and the action is to trigger that switch. And now we can give it a test. I can call the apartment by pressing the call button on the intercom and it calls the control for touchscreen. I get video and I can answer and I've got two way audio and I can also release the door lock and then hang up the call. I can then also view the Verso camera and initiate a call to it and also control the door lock this way.
secret. So you can now configure a second apartment against SIP2 on the Verso and carry out the exact same setup. Obviously, I've only got one button on my Verso, but if you were to use a five button keypad or a touch display, then you'd be able to call the second apartment on the Verso. The main limitation is the fact you've only got two SIP accounts available. So if your MDU project has many apartments, but only two penthouses, for instance, with control for this method will be fine. But if you have more apartments that need control for, then you would need some form of PBX on site. Thank you for watching and I hope it's of some help to you.